Genshin Impact is a mobile gotcha game. Hello, 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 everybody. It's your boy Jmalls of Jmalls Gaming here today to talk Genshin Impact version 3.0. The special program for said patch, for said version even, dropped yesterday. And I saw a bit of negativity going around. People expecting more from Genshin Impact for a big version update. Saying Inazuma was more hype. And I was there for the 2.0 special program. Like, I was there. That reaction's up on my channel right now. I think I reacted to it. I may have just reacted to this, the trailer. That's possible. But I was there, and I did watch it. And I feel like people are very much going in with rose-tinted glasses in regards to that. Because it was pretty much what we got here for the 3.0 trailer. I don't know why people were expecting more. Like, it was going to be a lot of dev talk, and we're going to have a couple of cinematics, maybe a couple of little in-game bits shown to us. I can understand why people kind of feel disappointed, because a lot of this stuff, we kind of just knew about, because they've been releasing trailers for Sumeru for a while up to this point. We saw the new characters, we saw the world, we saw what the story was going to be roughly about, so it wasn't really much new to tell us outside of, like, what the banners were going to be, or what the new artifacts were going to be, and stuff like that. And that's all very basic Genshin Impact stuff. So I'm just going to let this trailer roll in the background here. As I talk about this. Because I feel like people forget that this game is a mobile gacha game. Yes, the game is on PC, but it's made primarily for the mobile audience first and foremost. It's going to tackle that market because that market is larger, I believe. So they're going to prioritize that market. And I know a lot of people will say, well, I wanted new endgame progression. I wanted new content to play for a more permanent basis, because what Sumeru is probably going to be is more of the same, where we do the zone, we explore it fully, we do the main story, we do the Archon quest, maybe do a couple of side quests as well, and then it's just back to artifact grinding or talent grinding and that kind of stuff. And yeah, because that's what Genshin's supposed to be, because it's a mobile game. And I don't believe they're going to really add more end game pillars of content like Spiral Abyss. I'm not a fan of Spiral Abyss. I think it's bad content overall. It relies mainly on just throwing a bunch of hard enemies with a lot of with really exaggerated health pools into the mix to reward those who have invested more into their characters and have most likely wailed on those characters. That's my opinion on Spiral Abyss. That's how I view it. I don't play Genshin Impact for that. Now, I do a lot of Genshin Impact content on the channel when I feel like it, but that's because I enjoy the bits of Genshin that I do enjoy. But, I feel like people are trying to elevate Genshin to be more than what it actually is. It is a mobile gacha game, and I've said that multiple times at this point. It's probably the best mobile gacha game out there right now, or at least the one that I've stuck with the most. But at the core, at the end of the day, it is a mobile gacha game where it's going to be predicated upon being able to drop in and drop out very quickly. Hence why we have resin, hence why we have things that never take that long to do. There's nothing in this game that lasts longer than, say, five minutes max. There really isn't. The cutscenes are all quick. They're very snappy. They're very... Here's what needs to be said, here's what needs to be done, bang, bang, bang. They don't leave a lot of room for development in them. There's not a lot of room for flavor in them. Seems we're getting a little bit of a shift for that in 3.0, where there's going to be a little bit more personalization, a little bit more characterization as well, a little bit more personality imbued into them. But, at the end of the day, they're probably all going to be quick, all very quick, fast, and snappy. Now, why is that? Because people who play on mobile might be playing on the toilet, they might be playing on the train, the bus, whatever. Or they might be playing in a waiting room where they might only have a couple of minutes to be able to play and then they need to be able to stop right then and there and don't want to feel like they lose, they just lost their entire play session. That's why artifacts are very quick to farm and each like session they take like a minute max sometimes, at least for me. They're very fast to farm, and you can choose, okay, I want to do a little bit more of this. But this is where the gotcha mobile part also comes in, 
and we have the resin system because to me the resin system strictly makes the game worse there is no uh, there is no facet of the game that is improved by the inclusion of the resin system i am a player i can i am my own person i can choose to play how much i want if i want to spend a lot of time grinding artifacts because that's just what i want to do that any given day i should be allowed to do that I should not have my arms tied behind my back to prevent me from doing so. But this is a mobile gacha game and they want recurring statistics. They want to be able to show that they have people that log in every day to play the game because if they want to be able to play the game, they kind of have to. Otherwise, they're losing out on progress. You can't just say, I have a free Saturday. I want to be able to just sit down. I want to give this character. And I'm just going to keep running these artifacts and these talent dungeons as many times as I so choose to to get the gear that I want. It's highly randomized, the stats are highly randomized, and then, even then, the stat leveling up, the, the additional stats you get as each artifact levels up, is also another layer of RNG. I got a really great flower piece the other day that had like ER and two crit stats, and I'm like, okay, this is going to re be really good. It rolled into defense every time except for one time when it rolled into crit rate. And that is by design, because they want you to always have a reason to log into the game. And they cap the resin at a very short amount, to where you can only do about four artifact runs per day, if you're using condensed resin. You're only going to use four. I mean, you do four. That's like five minutes max. Then you may have your dailies, which might be another five minutes max. And then you might have the current event, which might be another two minutes. All this adds up to maybe about 15 minutes of content a day that you are time restricted. You are forced to be able to cap out your progression per day. Unless you want to spend money and get more resin. Or get more premiums that you can turn into resin. That is by design. Where if you want to be able to play the game more, you have to pay more. And it's a free-to-play game. So I expect that them to get their money some in some regard. But because of that system because of that implied monetization method that to me makes the game worse genshin impact will never be my primary game it just never will because that because it's a mobile gacha game and it has these systems in place it has these methodologies in play to restrict the amount of time you can play for free any given day without swiping a credit card because it has these restrictions on how quickly you can get your character. Because it has these restrictions arbitrarily. Because it's a mobile gacha game. The power system is largely separate from what the what is in-game. Because, sure, you can argue you can play the game entirely free to play. I am. I have not dropped a penny on this game. And I'm fine with that. I'm not going to shell from the rooftops demanding additional content for me to play i am entirely free to play i'm not going to do that what i am going to do though is point out the facts point out this is a mobile gacha game i've said that many times in this video this is a game designed to have you log in every day to play a little bit and then to dip out it is a game designed so that when a new patch comes out or a new version you might have content to be able to satisfy you for maybe a week or two, if le if that. And then you tip out and you go back to the standard formula. It is designed to be like that. It is designed to have very extravagant, very different characters. So that you are incentivized, whether it is from an aesthetic perspective, perspective a gameplay perspective or a meta perspective and yes those are two different things to spend money to guarantee the fact you can get those characters or those weapons never pull in the weapon banner by the way just don't do it you'll you'll thank me later you don't need them also this is a this is a separate subject i make for a different video but note how the game does difficulty because it's not in terms of mechanics it's in terms of do you have X to beat Y? Oh, I'm fighting a Abyss Mage that has a massive Pyro Shield. I need to be able to counter that. If I just don't have it, well, tough luck. 
You're going to have to whittle it down very slowly over the course of time. The game is designed to be like that. It is designed to where you, after you spend or invest in a certain character, the game is designed to reward you for doing so. Have you ever noticed that the Spiral Abyss, the affixes for them, tend to align with the characters currently on the banner? So like when when Ito was around, there where the Spiral Abyss had a Geo damage buff, or something like that, it rewarded basically having Geo. Do you ever notice that? Do you ever notice why? Because Ito's on the banner, right? Yeah, but do you ever wonder why that is? They want to incentivize you to get that character. That is the methodology behind the game. Everything in this game is constructed for that sole reason. They want you to be able to buy these characters. Gressing those characters is secondary. Because building a character in this game is a grind, it takes forever, it's highly RNG, and it's not very much, it's not very player, it doesn't have a lot of player agency to it. It really doesn't. You can choose to either have a bad artifact set on them and do a lot less damage, or you can have the highly optimal set and do a ton of damage in a game that really doesn't require a ton of damage. A lot of the content in this game is very easy compared to, say, the final the final stage of Spiral Abyss. It's very easy in that regard. You can do the main story, you can do the Archon Quest with very little optimization going for you. Hell, if you wanted to just use travel, you can probably do that. Because the game is not designed to be hard, it is not designed to be a challenge, it is not designed to be a wall to, over to have walls to overcome, it is designed to, to make you care about the world and make you care about the characters so that you are willing to spend money on them. Do you ever wonder why they said, hey, we're only going to do reruns for characters if they are relevant to the story. Do you ever wonder why that is? When we were doing the Chasm Quest, it's not like we had the D-Luke banner up. Not D-Luke, but... Oh, say... It's not like when the Chasm Quest was up. That we had, say, Yaimiko. She's not relevant to the story. The people doing the Chasm Quest are going to care about those characters. They're going to care about Zhao. They're going to care about Yelon. They're going to care about Ito. And because they care more about those characters by doing that quest, they may want to get those characters. Genshin Impact is a mobile gacha game. And if, you're, and if you understand that, like I do, and you're okay with that, and you're like, okay, I understand what this game is. I understand that my criticism probably is not going to amount to much. It's one of the reasons I stopped doing a lot of critical Genshin Impact content. Because I can make a video criticizing the resin system and saying, hey, I think this game would be a better game if there was no resin and I could just play as much as I wanted to on any given play session. I could make that video. It's not going to matter much. Why would they care? They're getting thousands of people willing to drop thousands of dollars into it. Anyways. No matter what I say, no matter how bad the game is, they have a ton of people willing to drop exorbitant amounts of dollars, of money, on this game. And you know what? I have no problem with them. If, they, if that is their decision where they can do that if they want to. That is not my money. They can do it what they want to. And if this is the game they want to drop their money on... Fair play to you, I have no issues with that. But, if you're willing to accept, this is what the game is. They're probably not going to end a lot of endgame content, a lot of endgame systems. Because why would they? They are rewarded for the status quo. When that Raiden banner came along, and they made bank, why would they change anything? Why would they? They are being rewarded for the status quo. And that's just my opinion. Let's go back to the trailer again. Now, why do I play Genshin Impact? Because it's not for endgame progression. It's not for all that. I play it for the world. I think some of the characters are pretty fun to interact with. I think the world's a ton of fun to explore. I like exploration-based open-world games like Breath of the Wild. So Genshin Impact... Sure, on release, people called it a clone. I didn't really care. I'm like, okay, sure. It's a clone of one of my favorite games of all time. 
Sure. I'll try it. And then I started to prefer Genshin's open world. I thought it was really fun. I liked the story. I think the storytelling could be a way better. But I understand why it is like it is. And I feel like a lot of people that throw a lot of criticism at Genshin Impact think it's going to turn into a game that it fundamentally isn't. It's like asking Apex Legends to become a turn-based RPG. It's not going to happen. And that might be sad to you, that might be disappointing to you, and I can understand that. I'm not going to try and disregard that feeling. I'm not. I'm just saying, this is what Genshin Impact is. Where the most hype part of this announcement was that trailer, first of all. The fact we're getting a new five-star character that's Dendra with... With Tiganati. I think I said that mostly correct? I may have mispronounced the H. That's possible. Or I may have just completely butchered it. That's also possible. We're getting a new four-star. We're getting new artifacts. New weapons, new crafting weapons. And to a lot of people, that's fine enough. And I'm one of those people. Because this is not my main game. I'm going to come in, play the content I want to play, do my dailies, because I enjoy doing them sometimes. Because I like having, I like the Genshin Impact combat system. And then I'm going to bounce. I'm going to go do whatever else I want to do. Because that is Genshin Impact. It is a mobile gacha game. And it's all of its systems, all of its design choices, are made with that in mind. So, yeah, I just wanted to make that video. So, thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please comment down below with your thoughts on the resin system particularly. Because you may have a different perspective, a different opinion on the resin system than I do. And that is entirely fine. I would like to hear your arguments and hear your thoughts on the system. So, let me know. Do you, are you in favor of it? Would you like more resin in, instead of just completely removing it? Are you in favor of completely removing it? Do you think it's fine? Or do you even think we need less resin for some reason? Let me know. If you And while you're down there, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. By the way, the link to the special program will be in the description down below for those who want to go watch it. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, uh, everybody.